I have an interesting story about um, kind of getting into art and learning that my family was going to be very supportive of it. Um, my, my mom tells a great story of me being about four years old and sitting outside with my little drawing pad and there were ravens everywhere and I was just entranced by this and I would sit out there and I would draw the ravens when they came in and I just thought you know when she was talking to me about this when I got a little bit older it's like you know they've always been really supportive I mean your four-year-old wants to go outside and draw ravens all day you know and and to kind of just allow that and let me be um, just the way I was uh, that that made it an easier decision to continue um, doing artwork as I got older and to kind of continuously do artwork as I got older and end up choosing to you know all the way through college I'm Judith Johnson and I'm an abstract expressionist I think that family support is incredibly important. Um, I know a lot of people who don't have that and they end up in a nine to five or something and they're not happy and what they want to do is art and they don't have time to do it the way they want to and it's come from family pressure a lot of the time. Like you can't go into art because you'll never get a job and you know you need something stable and I just feel very lucky that I never ever had to deal with with that because um, if I wasn't producing art, I would not be in a good place, you know? I think when you go through a BFA program in university, um, it'd be impossible to not be influenced by your professors. Someone who challenged me a lot in, in university to explore new things and work outside my comfort zone was Lyle Salmi. And he is a working artist and also a professor still at Millican. Um, and he's just been really inspiring to see the way he continues to work and continues to inspire more students. Um, as far as other artists, I've really been more looking at nature and textiles recently, which is not something that I had any experience with while I was doing my uh, school. So the, the artist that I was really influenced by then was Rothko, and it wasn't necessarily the style that he was working in, but it was the juxtaposition of the color, um, and I think I still kind of have that influence when I'm working is trying to have you know an interesting juxtaposition of color and form. I started out doing a lot of charcoal drawing. I still enjoy that and I do work it into the pieces I do now. Um, in college I leaned more towards oils. Uh, I don't know what why I made the switch um, when I kind of I started working again a few years ago. I had, I had a long period um, of about seven years where I didn't do any work. I was building a family and all of that. But I started with working with acrylics, which actually turned out to be something I really, really enjoy. And I could uh, mix it with the charcoal drawing and everything that I do to make kind of multimedia pieces. Uh, more recently, within the last couple of months, I've kind of moved to doing a little bit smaller, more intimate collage pieces, um, and it's a mix with oil pastels, acrylic paint, things that don't seem to go together, <laughs> charcoal, everything I can put in there, and um, I've been really enjoying kind of discovering that and, and what works and what doesn't. I have two boys and um, they're almost 10 and almost 12 and they're very busy um, you know we're soccering here and you know all of these things that we have to run back and forth from and really what I was tapping into with that was 
our busy soccer schedule. I mean, I know it's so cliche, I'm a soccer mom, but um, really it was like, we're running here, we're running there, you know, there's the, the, the fans are frantic even at this age and you know the kids are having a lot of fun and once again I just kind of put that together and tried to to capture what that feels like for me. My inspiration for Breeze was um, this was during the time period where I was just out in my garage music blasting I actually dance while I while I paint when I'm doing that um, and it was kind of I, was, I work on several pieces at the same time um, and when I'm working in that style and it was getting to that point where it's like I'm gonna have to go to bed you know I'm out of breath you know and I just thought wow that would be kind of that would be kind of appropriate name for this because it was very um, there was a lot of movement to it um, and it was just it, it you can see, well, I can see, the kind of franticness of it, and the it's a very upbeat, exciting piece, I think. And then the um, the result of that was being very tired and out of breath, and I just thought that was a really neat way to kind of name that one, you know. Airport was really fun. Actually, all of these have been really fun because what I'm doing is I'm kind of getting the sights from, you know, being at an airport, like the busyness, the um, the different colors, the different movements that are going on, you know, the planes taking off and landing. And I'll do a flat piece that's not collaged at all. I'll do a flat piece. Um, and then I'll put that aside and I'll do another one also reacting to that, maybe another one. And then, you know, I'm cutting them up and putting them together until it feels like a busy airport, you know? <laughs> so all of these have been fun in that way, um, trying to catch the essence of what I'm being inspired by at the moment. And, um, you know, at the same time having a cohesive, um, a cohesive piece that is balanced. When I was working on ham, um, it actually it started off as one of my reactionary pieces, listening to music, and as I was working on it, it started to look a little bit like ham. <laughs> that feels so weird to say, but it did, and I was like, you know what? I'm I like that. I really like that. So, I mean, that ended up informing a little bit of the color choices that I made at that point, but it's just kind of fun when you end up seeing something. You know, if, if you look at anything long enough, you start to see things in it, but I just noticed that and it was like, I kind of like that. <laughs> City was a really fun one to do. Um, when I was beginning to work on City, I was thinking about um, some trips we'd taken to Chicago fairly recently. And it was, it was nighttime most, mostly when we were there. And in Chicago at nighttime, it's like you're seeing these snippets of buildings, like kind of juxtaposed with these snippets of like storefronts and you know the the neon colors from the bars and that sort of thing and it just has a very um, it has a very particular feeling I feel like when you're driving through a city um, you know Chicago feels very different from New York and New York feels very different from San Francisco and so I was trying to catch the essence of being in that city Chicago it was very there it was very blue it was very gray, it was very, there was brightness of like, you know, yellows, and it was just a very, um, it was an interesting, interesting thing for me to try and work with, and uh, at the end I feel like I got something that made me feel like, you know, that city experience that I just had.
Traffic was also very fun. That was also inspired by our recent <laughs> Chicago trip. Um, we are not used to traffic in this area. And when you're traveling, like, you know, on the Dan Ryan, for instance, <laughs> going up to Chicago, um, there's really a lot of interesting things. When you're stuck in traffic, it's amazing the things that you actually notice. Um, so in that piece, I wanted to kind of capture that, that essence of moving through busy streets. Um, but then also when you see the, the, the buildings along the way and the L stations, um, it, it's really interesting to kind of pick up on those shapes and the people and yeah, just come up with something where it's like, oh, this is traffic, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, just trying to, uh, trying to capture all the little things that I end up noticing. And I don't know if everybody else is noticing those things, but just picking out the little things that I notice that I think are interesting about being in different uh, situations and places. and. I have to be listening to music in order to work. I don't know if it's just because it blocks out my very busy household <laughs> or um, I feel like it really informs a piece when you are working alongside a piece of music that does something to you or for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I can work anything from drum and bass to, <laughs> you know, I don't listen to country usually, but drum and bass to alternative to electronic to classical, I mean, and whatever that's making me feel and do, that's highly reflective in the pieces. I've really been enjoying the level of things that are going on right now. Um, like I said, I had a very slow period. Uh, there were a few months right after I graduated that, you know, I was interested in showing and, you know, focused on showing and selling pieces and all of that. Um, and as I was building my family, it just became less important. And here recently, um, actually my mother-in-law is an artist in town as well, Louise Audrith. She actually kind of urged me to get back into doing some work. Um, and she invited me to show with her once, which we did, and I was like, you know, I kind of miss it a little bit, like, it's kind of fun, you know? So I started doing more submitting to things, and of course, the more you submit, the more you get. I'm not trying to be traveling around the world with my pieces or anything. That's just not in the cards, and it's not actually something that I want. I'm a homebody. I enjoyed, you know, taking my kids to soccer and just having the flexibility to be at home and not have to be worrying about those things. But kind of the level of what's going on now, there's been renewed interest in my work and I enjoy, you know, having my work shown around here.